Internet erupts after seeing who Trump just flipped off in front of everyone, they had it coming, and once again the American loony left has their collective panties in a bunch. This time it's because they think President Trump gave the middle finger to the Italian Prime Minister, Paolo Gentiloni, at the G7 summit in Tarmina, Sicily last week. You just can't make this stuff up. The American left is suffering from such an acute case of Trump derangement syndrome that now they are even grasping at straws with this. They really have no shame whatsoever. They are just intent on finding whatever they can to attack President Trump. Never has a man who has tried to do the right thing been attacked too viciously. These people should really check themselves and take a long hard look in the mirror. This isn't the way you act just because you lose an election. Did actually believed that after a disastrous presidency like the Obama presidency was that the American people would keep on electing Democrats. If they did it proves how insane they really are. Notice how these liberal scumbags call President Trump, the orange commander-in-chief of the United States. Makes you wonder how they would have felt if we on the right would have referenced President Barack Hussein Obama's appearance. We weren't even allowed to comment on those dopey-looking dumb boyers of his. But we all know the left has a different set of rules for themselves. A little reminder for the left, Biniam and Netanyahu humiliated after Barack Obama dumped him for dinner for a head of government to visit the White House and not pose for photographers is rare. For a key ally to be left to his own devices while the president withdraws to have dinner in private was, until this week, unheard of. Yet that is how Biniam and Netanyahu was treated by President Obama on Tuesday night according to Israeli reports on a trip viewed in Jerusalem as a humiliation. After failing to extract a written promise of concessions on settlements, Mr. Obama walked out of his meeting with Mr. Netanyahu but invited him to stay at the White House, consult with advisors and let me know if there is anything new, a U.S. congressman, who spoke to the Prime Minister, said. It was awful, the congressman said. One Israeli newspaper called the meeting a hazing in stages poisoned by such mistrust that the Israeli delegation eventually left rather than risk being eavesdropped on a White House telephone line. Another said that the Prime Minister had received the treatment reserved for the President of Equatorial Guinea. Left to talk among themselves Mr. Netanyahu and his aides retreated to the Roosevelt Room. He spent a further half hour with Mr. Obama and extended his stay for a day of emergency talks to try to restart peace negotiations. However, he left last night with no official statement from either side. He returned to Israel yesterday isolated after what Israeli media have called a White House ambush for which he is largely to blame. Sources said that Mr. Netanyahu failed to impress Mr. Obama with a flowchart purporting to show that he was not responsible for the timing of announcements of new settlement projects in East Jerusalem. Mr. Obama was said to be livid when such an announcement derailed the visit to Israel by Joe Biden, the vice president, this month, and his anger towards Israel does not appear to have cooled. Robert Gibbs, the White House press secretary, cast doubt on minor details in Israeli accounts of the meeting but did not deny claims that it amounted to a dressing down for the prime minister, whose refusal to freeze settlements is seen in Washington as the main barrier to resuming peace talks. The Likud leader has to try to square the rigorous demands of the Obama administration with his nationalist, ultra-Orthodox coalition partners, who want him to stand up to Washington even though Israel needs U.S. backing in confronting the threat of a nuclear Iran. The Prime Minister leaves America disgraced, isolated, and altogether weaker than when he came, the Israeli daily newspaper Haaretz said. In their meeting Mr. Obama set out expectations that Israel was to satisfy if it wanted to end the crisis. Israeli sources said. These included an extension of the freeze on Jewish settlement growth beyond the 10-month deadline next September, an end to building projects in East Jerusalem and a withdrawal of Israeli forces to positions held before the Second Intifada in September 2000. Newspaper reports recounted how Mr. Netanyahu looked excessively concerned and upset when he pulled out a flu chart to show Mr. Obama how Jerusalem planning permission worked and how he could not have known that the announcement that hundreds more homes were to be built would be made when Mr. Biden arrived in Jerusalem. Mr. Obama then suggested that Mr. Netanyahu and his staff stay at the White House to consider his proposal so that if he changed his mind he could inform the president right away. I'm still around. The daily newspaper Yediot Aharonot quoted Mr. Obama as saying, Let me know if there is anything new. With the atmosphere so soured by the end of the evening, the Israelis decided that they could not trust the telephone line they had been lent for their consultations.
Mr. Netanyahu and Ehud Barak, his defense minister, went to the Israeli embassy to ensure that the Americans were not listening in. President Trump has never been disrespectful to any world leader as badly as Barack Hussein Obama was to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But since Bibi is a Jew, and from Israel, I am sure the left is perfectly okay with this. Also, let's not forget how the 2017 California Democratic Party convention ended last week. When outgoing party chairman John Burden, a five-term Democratic congressman, 1974 to 1983, from the San Francisco Bay Area of course, took it upon himself to invite all attendees to join him in a chant. Now all together, F asterisk CK Donald Trump. Burton yelled while raising both his middle fingers. Classy Democrats, classy. Please share if you are tired of the liberal double standards. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.